yeah, I um, I, I, I still can't <laughs> like believe this happened either. Meeting Matthew freaking Mercer and getting to play test Daggerheart with the lead designer and Ginny D. These were like totally out of the blue experiences, not planned ahead of time in any way, and I've been dying to talk about it. First, hey, I'm Bob. This is where we learn how to have more fun playing RPGs together, and I just got back yesterday from PAX Unplugged, which is a big, beautiful tabletop gaming convention in the city of Philadelphia. Definitely catch me there next year, but we're gonna dive right into this little story. Day one of PAX Unplugged 2023, me, my wife, and Grace World Destroyer sit down for breakfast with Professor DM of Dungeon Craft, his wife, and Steven Glicker of Roll for Combat. Go check out their channels if you haven't already. We're eating and chatting at this nice hotel restaurant. Mind you, none of us were actually staying at that hotel. They just picked a random place near the convention center that had good food, and it was delicious. But when we're about halfway done, Guess who walks in and sits at a table no more than 30 feet away from me? One, one movement speed away. Matthew frickin' Mercer. He was scheduled to give a talk, basically a keynote presentation for the convention in a couple hours. So I was expecting to see him in person for the first time this very day but not while I'm scarfing down a breakfast sandwich. So picture this, Matt sits down such that he and I are practically facing each other from across this restaurant. And I'm there essentially rolling wisdom saves, just trying not to look at him. Like I know this guy just traveled all the way across the country. He's trying to eat breakfast and have a relaxing morning before his big presentation. So with all the restraint I could muster, I did not do anything except enjoy my own breakfast with my wife and friends until about 20 minutes later, we're finally about to leave the restaurant and I see that Matt is also done. Just got the check, so I say to myself, Bob, if you don't go say hi, you're gonna regret this. And I know I'm acting like a total fanboy at this point, but the closest feeling I can relate this to is like walking over to your middle school crush to say, I like you, and that's basically what I did. I walk over, hey, I don't want to interrupt. I just wanted to say I love your work and introduce myself. My name's Bob. And then he goes, yeah, uh, Bob, the world builder? The world builder? The world builder? And that's when I died and was reborn as Bob, the world builder. Because even though thousands of people before him have added a the into the name of my channel, I now officially endorse that title as 100% just as valid as the actual name of my channel. And I promise I wasn't even wearing my merch or anything because this awesome, comfortable t-shirt didn't exist yet. It's brand new. I drew the design myself and it comes in a couple other earthy and pastel colors. You can pick one up through the links below to support what I do. But yeah, to be completely honest, after being recognized by Matt Mercer and having other people witness that happen, I kind of blanked out. Thankfully, Professor DM and Steven were much more coherent than I, and I do remember Professor DM, in all his glory, saying something to the effect of, you know, Matt, you really surprised everybody with 2d12 instead of a d20. <laughs> Matt laughed, and then for maybe a minute at most, he talked about Daggerheart, and we all joked about people, including us, making YouTube thumbnails with his face on them. Then finally, the person Matt was with kindly asked us if we wanted to get a picture. And I'm so glad they did, because at this point, I did not have the guts to ask anything more of him. Like, I did bring my dice box into breakfast, thinking, oh, maybe after the panel, he'll be signing stuff. But I didn't push for an autograph at breakfast. The photo was great, and we went our separate ways. Fast forward about an hour and a half. Grace and I show up to Matt's presentation 30 minutes early, only to be told they have already capped the line and we could not get in. So in a very dystopian 21st century fashion, we watched the first half of Matt's panel live on Twitch while it was happening on the other side of a wall, only about one movement speed away. But then I get a private message on Twitter out of nowhere. Spencer Stark, lead designer of Candela Obscura and Daggerheart says, hey, if you're around today at 1 p.m., I'm running a game of Daggerheart for Ginny D and some other friends. You should come play. It's still in development, but would let you get some hands-on experience with it. 
And as you know from the title of this video, I jumped right on that opportunity. Okay, I thought this would look better. I'll put it on the screen. It says, Critical Role Meeting. And we got to be in there. That was so, that was so cool. Ginny D is just as wonderful in person as on YouTube. And, and though she was surprisingly short, I know she's mentioned that in some videos, it's totally true. Then with more height and just as much charm, I met another YouTube guest, Pointy Hat. Yeah, Antonio D'Amico is not just a cartoon and he's even cooler in 3D. Now, I've already made an entire video about the first Daggerheart playtest a couple months ago, linked up here on your screen. I didn't get to play that version though, so I'm just gonna go over a few fun mechanics that I think were new and tell you a little bit about the interesting characters we made. But please remember Spencer's message, Daggerheart is still in development, everything is subject to change. One, based on player feedback, they switched from a horizontal sheet with cards laid on top of it to a vertical sheet with cards on the table or wherever you wanna put them. Two, I didn't have any details about armor in the previous video, but at least for now, it works like this. Monsters do not roll to hit, they automatically roll damage. Then the defending player can choose whether or not to reduce incoming damage by checking off one armor as a resource and rolling their armor die for the amount of damage reduction. Side note, this made enemy turns a lot faster and I felt pretty cool because I've actually been working on a homebrew project to eliminate those monster attack rolls in D&D. Three, instead of rolling initiative and instead of just going around the table, which is how my group does it these days, Daggerheart is currently using a method called action tokens. Basically, players just go in any order. You have an idea, nice, do it. But when you do it, you put one action token in front of the GM. An action token can be anything. This is just a Deathbringer die from when I played Deathbringer with Professor DM on day two of the con. But then, anytime a player rolls their action with fear, meaning when they rolled 2d12 for their action, they rolled higher on the fear die that they designated than the hope die. And that roll with fear means the GM can go next if they choose to. The GM can also act after any player who fails whatever roll they were rolling for. And when the GM acts, they do it by cashing in any number of those action tokens the players had built up on their turns. And the more action tokens the GM spends, the more cool stuff the monsters are able to do. It made combat very dynamic and fluid while being surprisingly like perfectly balanced and even though I've never played with Ginny or Antonio or the other amazing designers we had the pleasure of sitting down with we didn't have any conflicts with people trying to act at the same time or anything though I could potentially see that as one drawback of this method among certain groups. Anyway, I played Gus, a ridgeborn fawn, which is supposed to be like a deer person, but I went full mountain man, goat man, got mountain goat man guy. You get it. I played the warrior class with a reskinned halberd that I described as a staff with a huge sharp rock tied to it. And Ginny played a fairy bard named Orchid, which all seems very on brand for her, but Daggerheart fairies are rather insect-like, so Ginny described her character like this six foot tall, creepy praying mantis who once ate one of her exes, and Antonio played an old human woman, this extremely fashionable sorcerer who wore high heels the entire adventure, Lady Demetria of House Floronos. Her full name was much longer, but that's all I was able to write down. And check this out. I got a ton of pictures of the cards for all the current character ancestries, and I kept my whole character sheet with like this page of these role-playing character building questions and info on level advancement, this player guide, and I even took a sheet of weapons and armor. And I don't know if I was supposed to take that one, but we didn't have to sign an NDA. They said everything is fair game to talk about as long as we make it clear that everything in Daggerheart is still in development and subject to change. So please tell me in the comments what you'd like to see more of about Daggerheart. And if this video gets 5,000 likes, I will make that new video. That's actually way fewer likes than the original Daggerheart video, so I think it's a reasonable goal. And for now, go check out my original Daggerheart video linked somewhere on your screen for an overview of the game. Then maybe pick up a new comfy Bob World Builder t-shirt or gorgeous character stat rolling, old school style stat rolling hoodie designed by Hankerin Fernail. Thank you for your support and keep building.